Alright guys, welcome back to uh, the second part of the showcase for this. In this video, I'm actually going to be showing you guys how to get everything set up and uh, working. Uh, sorry if you guys hear clicking from my keyboard. I tried to suppress it as much as I can, but I'm not much of a video person, so I don't know what I'm doing. Let's grab all the items we need. Uh, computer, wireless turtle, basic drawers, disk drive, wired modem, networking cable, uh, ender chests, some form of storage, and then we'll grab these later, but we need some form of item transport. So, oh, and I also forgot, we also need uh, monitors. So we'll place our monitor, which needs to be 5 by 3. Uh, let's move this back a little bit. So this is our monitor. Next to it, we're going to place our disk drive, and then behind it, we're going to place the stored computer. We need to attach these with networking cable, and once they are attached, we can right-click the modems, and that should turn them on, which will uh, which you'll know because the ring has turned red. Now we want to place uh, some form of store some form of storage here. You can place the ender chest directly, but I think that looks ugly, so I don't do that. And then we place that there. Um, and then later we will hook these up using uh, the thermal dynamics servo and item duct. But again, you can use anything you want. Now we need to hook up um, the ATM or the ATM items, which you can use anything, well, any shape you want. You can put one row bigger than the other, or you can do uh, three by two. Doesn't matter, but. Uh, we're going to keep it 3x3 three three for this demonstration. And now let us continue on to the ATM portion. So we'll place this here, a disk drive here, an advanced monitor or monitor here. And then behind it, we're going to need a computer. The orientation does not matter. Uh, a disk or a wireless turtle behind this drawer. And then we are going to need... Um, to that, we're going to need a wired modem block for this turtle to be able to interface with this monitor. We'll place that here and we will turn that on. Now we need one turtle per column here, uh, per, per column of drawers, and we will place one turtle here on uh, the first row to the right. So if your orientation of your drawers is facing this way, these have to be on the right side of the refueler. Now uh, we will take a chest, and we will place the chest next to this turtle. doesn't matter what way it's facing, uh, but we'll place that here so that um, he can grab coal to put into the other turtles. And now we will hook up the ender chest. So we will do this and place this here. You can use any form of, of item ducts, doesn't really matter. This is just what I prefer. Next up, um, let's grab the ender chest again. And you need one ender chest on the second relative Y of each column. That is so that they can deposit it in here and that can be transported into the storage box. Uh, you can put a diamond on the latches and change the color channel if you want to. But that is personal preference and that is, uh, again, completely up to you. So I think this is all set up. Now all we need to do is actually fetch the code. So let's start on the right side and uh, start off with this helper ATM. So the screen's gonna freeze for a moment while I grab that uh, pastebin code. So now we can do pastebin, get, and then I'm gonna call all my files on each one of these startup.lua so that they will initialize to this anytime they are loaded and unloaded. Now we're going to need the turtle ATM code for pastebin. So we will do pastebin again. And all of these codes will be down in the description for you guys to grab, so uh, no need to worry about that. So now we will get the listen Lua code from pastebin. We will call pastebin get startup.lua spin dot get not get dot and again uh, okay sorry about 
that. Okay. So now these are semi-ready to go. What we need to do now is grab some coal. Because uh, the initial refueling is not automatic. That you do need to do. Put 10 in here. And then we'll call refuel all and reboot. And 10 again. And refuel all and reboot. One more time. Actually, we'll leave this guy unfueled so we can show the refueler guy. We'll give him 10. We'll call refuel all. And let's grab the paste bin for the refueler. And paste bin get. And startup dot lua. Place some coal in here so he has some to grab. Don't remember if he will grab it the first time. We'll see. Okay, now we need to get the store. So let me grab that paste bin code. And let's call paste bin get call this startup.lua as well. So if we reboot, you will see it's going to complain because we do not have, well, after this, it's going to complain because we do not have a modem connected, which I forgot to do, but that's not a big deal. So let me grab a wireless modem and attach that here. This ring should turn red momentarily. And now it should be ready to go. Just waiting for a command. And I think this one's complaining as well. Yes, it is. Uh, okay. <laughs> I forgot one thing. Let me put these away. Oh, did I forget to set a label? Oh, crap. Okay. One second. Technical difficulties. Okay. Let me grab that uh, listen Lua code again. So you don't make the mistake that I did, uh, set a label, and you actually need to set a label for the refueler, I forgot to do that. But it's label set. What this will do is it will make it to where uh, if you break it, it still keeps the code that's on it, and it uses the name of the turtles in order for it to know how far to go. So we're going to need coal again. And we will call refuel all, and then reboot. Same thing here. Okay. And now, so this doesn't happen again. Uh, you do have to place a ceiling above uh, the turtles. It doesn't have to be, like, it can be at any height you want it to. You can hide all this, some decorative block or whatever. Uh, but they should be ready to go after we reboot them which they already did, but for some reason they're not get paste bin get startup thinking too fast, sorry guys reboot reboot, okay All right, now they're all awaiting instructions, and that is correct. This guy is initialized, this guy is initialized, this guy should be initialized, and that should be everything that we need, except for this guy who needs to be rebooted. Okay, now he's just waiting for a message from one of these guys that they need some fuel. So, let's send that message. So if we come over here and we do send file, it's going to ask us for a file name. We do turtles.lua. This is automatically fetched. And you can see you just navigated to him. And I forgot to place a block behind this guy. So label set refueler. Now I can break him and grab him. He should have uh, grabbed the cold though. I think I do need to initialize them with some. Okay, sorry about that. So if we do send, reboot, and then we call send file, 
And then again, turtles.lua. Should navigate to him, give him fuel. He'll go back, grab some more fuel. And if we send file one more time for the rebooted one, he should now have fuel. And there we go. So now if any of these run out of fuel, he will grab some from this chest and go give them fuel. And then you just need to send them the file once again. All right, next thing. Now we need to grab some blocks. So let's get some blocks that are similar, like draconium and charred draconium. And then let's just get a bunch of crap blocks. So we'll put these in here. And then we need a floppy disk. So if you use a floppy disk, if it's empty, it will automatically check the user card, and then create the user for you and redirect you. Uh, oh yeah, okay, we need to reboot because there was no items in there. So make sure once uh, when you reboot, when you boot this up, there are actually items, because otherwise the message you will get is that either items or the monitor needs to be initialized. So send file after we send the reboot. And turtles. There we go, they scanned. And as you can see, we have all the items. Okay. We can go to diorite, and our balance is currently nothing. So let us go get some money. So we'll insert this, and unless I forgot to turn some turn somebody on, then yeah, I did. Once again. Now our balance is zero dollars. So let us get some items to deposit, about some spruce wood, and we will do diamond. So if we put the spruce wood in here, this should go to 64. Now if we put diamond block, since it contains the word block, uh, any item that contains the word block will automatically have its value increased ninefold. So this should, like you see, went up nine times. Uh, and the items just automatically get dropped. I don't have any anything hooked up to grab the items, but you can add that yourself. So you can see here, credit 64 and credit 576. Those are the two transactions we made. And if we control T and hold it, it will terminate the program. We can do LS and we can see that it generated a prices.txt file. So if we go inside of prices.txt, these are the two items that we inputted and it automatically added them to this file that they did not previously exist and gave them a value. So we can come in here and change this value. And now if we reboot it and we go insert the diamonds once more, let's recycle this. Now it should go up by quite a big margin. And there we go, 7,040. So now if we take this and we come back over here now we are able to purchase items. So let us buy the diorite we so much wanted before. And you can see the price is one, so the cost is only 10 because it's one per item. Come in here, now we have our diorite. But say you want to change the price. Well, you can just come in here and you can type in help. And that will give you a list of the available commands. And in this one, you can see change price. So if we do change price, we'll ask you to type an item name. Um, let's do dior, D-I-O-R, since that's in diorite. Okay, so it says match diorite or match diorite smooth. Okay, we want to do match diorite, and we want to set the price of that to 4. And uh, again, we want to change the price of something else. We want to change the price of draconium. So let's change the price of draconium blocks to... Uh, 1,000. And now we should be good. So if we come back in here, let's recycle this. And we go to Diorite Smooth. That price is 1. And if we go to, where is it? Diorite. The price is 4. So 730. If we add 10, it should be 40, which should bring us down to 6,990. So if we go back to Diorite. 6,990, and there is our diorite. And once again, if we go to Conium Block, we change that price to 1,000, 
So let's buy. Oh, we don't have enough for that. Definitely not. Um, sad. Let's buy two. And once again, we have 4,990 and our two draconian blocks. So that is all for getting this set up. Uh, so yeah, if you have any questions or any problems, just let me know. I will answer in the comments. Uh, all the pastebin links will be in the comments. And thanks for watching.